Welcome to Keeping It Real with KC. I am your host, KC Phoenix, and this is another episode that I think is kind of funny, almost like the penis fish. <laughs> so I decided to do this. I mentioned this in one of my previous episodes. I forgot which episode it was, because after you do so many episodes, because right now I'm on episode 20. So after you do so many episodes, they all kind of mesh together after a while. But I know that during the episode, I mentioned being real and being fake. I think it was on the Friends episode, if I'm not mistaken, the reason why I don't have many friends. Um, but anyways, and I had said during that episode that the being real and being fake um, or being polite and being fake, I should say, are two different things. As, and I'm pretty sure I also said I could do an episode on that by itself. Well, that is this episode here. And it was funny because I came across a website Two. Let me pull this up. And it's, the website is IdeaPod. And it's 16 signs of fake people. And as I was reading over this stuff, I was like, wait a second. That doesn't really, I don't necessarily agree with some of this stuff or whatever, but okay. But before I go into that, I need to explain about myself because this is sort of an added chapter from the polite versus fake thing with me. I always believe that you can be polite to someone if someone says, for example, if someone says good morning to you, it's polite to say good morning back. Or good evening, good afternoon, or, or whatever. If someone says hello to you, it's polite to say hello back. That is being, in my eyes, polite. Even if you don't like the person. And for me, personally, I usually don't initiate things most of the time. And, that, and that's whether I like you or don't like you. It, it, it's just for me personally, I'm, as I mentioned before, I'm mostly an introvert anyway. I'm mostly to myself. I don't initiate things most of the time. Even if I like you, I may come into contact with you. But if it's not for a long period of time, then I may not necessarily greet you. It, it just depends. Also, it depends on what my mood is that day. There's a lot of variables in play when it comes to how I deal with people. However, when someone does say hello to me, whether I like them or dislike them or whether I love them, or I can't really think of anybody I hate, but even if I were to hate someone, if someone said hello, I would more than likely say hello back, just to be polite. My personal belief on being fake is when you go above and beyond, where if, let's say I someone I don't like greets me, and they're like, hi. Hey, and I'll be like, oh, hello. That's me being polite. Fake would be, oh, hi, how are you? Oh, great, how are the kids doing? Oh, such a, and I'm starting a conversation about stuff I don't give a damn about, which usually I don't give a damn about most stuff anyway. But, and most people know that about me. But it's rare that I'm going to go in asking 20 questions. And that's what I feel is fake. If you don't like somebody, if you don't rock with somebody, why have these long, drawn-out conversations with 20 questions and stuff? 
If I don't like you, I'll be polite and listen to you. Because that's just being polite. I'm not being fake. And if you ask me whether I like you or not, I'll tell you, no, I don't really too much care for you. I'll, I'll just, but most people aren't brave enough to ask that. Because most people know me, the people who do know me know that I'm very direct and honest person. You ask me a question, I'll give you an answer. Um... But fakeness is when I feel people just go overboard. Or if somebody is wearing something that is not flattering. And again, when it comes to looks and fashion and everything else, it, it's all subjective. You know, what as saying goes, one man's junk is another man's treasure. But even though it's subjective, with that on the table, you, there still has to be a level of honesty involved with it where is your honest opinion even if it is subjective it's still, even if it is subjective it's still your honest opinion so if someone asks you what you think about an outfit they're wearing and you say the total opposite of what you're thinking you're being fake that's how I feel if you're like, oh, that is so amazing and you should wear that more often. When, Wow, where did you get that from? And all that other stuff instead of just saying, eh, that's not you. Eh, I, I see that's your style, but it's not really my style. These are the things that I, I feel are fake. Like I said, fake to me is just going overboard. Being polite is the bare minimum, is what I look at it. Polite, as a matter of fact, yeah, polite is the bare minimum. Of if somebody holds a door open for you, say thank you. Being fake, in my eyes, is okay. The person says thank you, but then they try to go into this whole story of something else and asking questions and trying to build a rapport and everything else with a stranger that just happened to hold the door open for them. And there may be some people out there who are genuinely like that, that if someone does something nice for them, they want to get to know them better and build a rapport and stuff. In my eyes, I feel those people are very rare. I always feel like there has to be an ulterior motive. There's no way someone could be that interactive with a complete stranger. What's the angle? That's just me. So uh, I feel there will be fakeness there. For this site, idea pod which i came across this i'm just going to go through these and then comment on them as <laughs> as i read them because it's so funny now you know what my idea of uh, is of being polite versus being fake this is idea pods idea and it's 16 things when it comes to fake people 16 things um fake people do Number one, fake people make plans they don't keep. Okay. Guilty. Sometimes. My mood is forever changing. I don't consider myself fake. It's just my mood changed. I was like, okay, well, I did want to do it. Now I don't. I'm a moody person. But... They say fake people make plans they don't keep. <laughs> so they're like, have you ever run into an old friend on the street and they instantly want to make plans to meet up for coffee? They are so excited to see you and talk about all the great things they are doing. But then no call, no coffee. The call never comes. This is a real problem in society. People make commitments they never intend to keep. It's a real testament to the type of person you are dealing with here. 
Now, when I make a commitment, I do my best to keep it. But also, however, <laughs> but and however, if I change plans because my mood changed, it's because I don't want to affect the mood of the person. If I'm in a gray space, I don't want to bring the other person or other individuals down. That's not fair to them. So I'm just like, okay, well, let me just remove myself. And usually I don't feel like going most of the time anyway. But, you know, when I think about it, now that I'm really thinking about it, it's usually when I'm invited. It's not when I'm like, oh, let's do this. So wait a minute. Now that I'm examining this out loud, yeah, it's usually when I'm invited. It's rare that I'll invite someone because I rarely do that anyway and then up and change. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Okay. We're working through some stuff here. Second thing. Fake people are only around when it's convenient for them. Okay. Yeah. That's true about fake people. <laughs> I, I've... That... That is so Los Angeles. <laughs> that's all. That's all I got to say. It's so Los Angeles. Fake people disappear when you need them the most. Hmm. Okay, let me read this one. Disappearing acts are common among fake people. They hang around when they get what they want from you. But the minute you need something from them, they bail. They can't even fathom missing out on their lives to help another person in need. And it doesn't have to be a life-threatening need. It could be something as simple as asking for a ride to pick up your car at the service station. After all, you do it for them. Now, let me add something in here. I try my best not to ask people to do stuff for me. And if I ask someone to do something for me, it's usually something that I'm willing to do for them. Where for, I'll just use this example. If I'm not willing to ask, if I'm not willing to pick up someone's car at the service station, which I more than likely wouldn't do, then I wouldn't ask someone to do it for me, if that makes sense. So when having friendships, what I recommend, because this is just my rule, if you know that you won't do it for them, then don't ask them to do it for you. And then everybody's all great when it comes to that. So just keep that in mind. Before you ask someone to do something for you, like house sit or watch your dog or take your dog for a walk or do this or do that, Think about, well, would I do it for that person? Because people ask other people to do things, but they don't think about the inconvenience it can cause to the other party. And my goal as a friend is to inconvenience people as little as possible. That is always my goal. Because one of the best things I ever heard was from my god sister, who lives in Brooklyn. And she would say, I'm not going to inconvenience myself for your convenience. And that's how I look at it. You don't want people inconveniencing you for their convenience, especially if they make a habit of it. So I'm, I'm throwing that out there. Don't ask people to do what you wouldn't do yourself. All right. Number four, fake people don't listen when you talk. OK. <laughs> Number five, fake people pretend not to be upset about things. That's a gray area. On that, it's not a thing of for some people, me, if I'm a little irritated about something or if I'm disturbed, I don't always say anything at the beginning because I'm analyzing for one. And second, I know that my words are venomous. 
So I'm not quick to just go and say something, even though I've been accused of such by some people. I'm not quick to go and say something right when I'm irritated. That's not my style. And usually, I do my best to give people passes on stuff. It's like, oh, they might have been oblivious to a situation. They didn't recognize it. I try to give people the benefit of the doubt. When they run out of passes, then it's game on. That's me personally. So on that, I feel like that's a, that's a gray area. Number six, fake people are never around or available. That's similar to, wasn't the other one? Fake people disappear when you need them or fake people only around when they're convenient with two and three. That's similar to two and three. Number six is similar to two and three. Fake people are never around or available. Okay. Number seven, fake people talk about you behind your back. Okay. Now I mentioned this on my show on I, on the Friends episode. That's what it was. It was on the Friends episode. I said that if I can say it while you're not present, I can say it while you're present. There's never been anything that I've said about anyone where they haven't been present that if, it, if I were called to the carpet and it was like, oh, well, did you say this? I'd be like, okay, yeah, I said it. And I have been called to the carpet before where someone asked me a question and I didn't remember, but I told them, I said, based off of what you told me, I was like, I don't remember saying it, but it sounds like something I would have said. I'll own that too. Because if I say something, I said it. And what? Next question. So yeah, fake people... Th they will talk about you behind your back. And those are the ones that smile and grin in your face and everything else. But when they talk behind your back, it isn't anything they can say to your face. Or they're talking behind your back, but asking you 20 questions to your face. That's how I feel about that. And it goes into, in number eight, what they're talking about goes into what I mentioned earlier. Fake people are extreme. Okay, this is a different extreme. My extreme is doing too much. This extreme, they're saying hot and cold without warning. That can be classified as moody. I'm moody. So no, I'm, I'm going to say that's gray area. Number nine, fake people never initiate a conversation, coffee, coffee date, or hang out. That's a gray area. I rarely do that because I don't want to be bothered. And there isn't anything fake about me. And I'll tell you, again, I don't want to be bothered. So I'll talk to you on the phone. I'll text you. But going out and doing this and doing that, no. So, and if that's an issue, oh well. Okay, number 10. Fake people pretend to try to please everyone. Okay, now that's interesting. Let me read this. Fake people are in, const in a constant state of juggling balls they can't possibly keep in the air. They will try to say yes to everyone because they can't stand rejection or the idea they may not actually be able to do everything they say they can. Instead, they promise things, say yes, and then many people are left out in the cold when the fake person doesn't deliver. Keep an eye out for these kinds of people and start the process of replacing them with people you can trust and can get to know for real. Hmm. That's interesting. Ah, this is very Los Angeles. Number 11. Fake people only pay attention to those in positions of power. Yeah. Yeah. As I mentioned before, I don't care who you are. If I'm cool with you, I'm cool with you. I'm, I'm going to rock with you. It doesn't matter what your position is. Like, I don't need your energy. My, I'm energy incarnate. I have my own energy. I don't need to ride anybody else's. So, yeah. Fake. This one right here. Let me read this. If someone is fake, they are likely looking for an 
for an easy answer or the easiest route to the top. You'll often see people in your work setting who prove to be fake because they only care about things when the boss comes around. They are the quintessential brown nosers, and once you are on to the, these people, it's not hard to confirm your suspicions. The problem with fake people is they don't respect you. That's why you need to embrace your inner beast and become a more powerful person. <laughs> Find out how on in our free master class. <laughs> Okay, so IdeaPod has a master class on embracing your inner beast. <laughs> Number 12, fake people work overtime to build or find relationships. I'll read this. When someone is being genuine, it's easy to become friends with them. And it's even easier to find yourself attracted to them. This is because, as you might come to find out, most people are not really showing you their true selves. So when you find someone who is being real, you'll find it incredibly enticing. So watch for people who have to work really hard to connect with other people. Mm. Okay, that little sentence there, that's a gray area for me because it's not easy for me to connect with other people. Even though I will say people, I mentioned this before, people for some reason just tell me all of their information. And I don't know if it's because they know I'm good at keeping secrets or if I just give off that energy or what. But yeah, but at the same time, when I'm in a room, I intentionally come off very standoffish because I want the walls and the barbed wire and the rabbit dogs and everything else, metaphorically, in front of me where it's like, please don't come talk to me. And then we go through the process of, okay, well, they made it through all the booby traps and everything else. <laughs> the Indian, I don't know if anybody's seen Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. They made it through all of that stuff. So yeah, you get the treasure, which is my friendship. Um, I, that's a gray area. The sentence is a gray area. When it, um, when they say, so watch for people who have a really hard time, who have to work really hard to connect with other people. Because... Um, it's not easy for me. One is because it's intentional and the other is I just, for, for the most part, I'm usually not that interested. <laughs> so yeah. All right. Um, fake people have a really hard time making friends or more importantly, keeping them. Yeah, another gray area. <laughs> It usually doesn't take long for people to find out that they are not who they said they were. Okay, now, no, that that part definitely doesn't apply. Okay. Number 13, fake people seek attention to validate themselves. Huh. Yeah. I don't know if that is always the case with fake people. I don't, cause there are, there are fake people I've seen throughout my lifetime where they weren't looking for attention and they weren't looking for attention to validate themselves. They, they're just looking, like I said, to get ahead or to see what they can get. So I'm, I feel like that could be a quality of a fake person where they do seek attention to validate themselves. But me personally, I, I, don't, I don't too much see that over, all the, over my lifetime of all the fake people that I've dealt with throughout, or throughout my lifetime. I don't see that. And as um, Drea said on Basketball Wives LA, validation is for parking, not people. So, yeah, that's how I feel about validation. Number 14, fake people distract from their fakeness with gossip. Mm. There could be some truth in that. 
with someone being fake. Um, maybe if fake people could do that. I don't know. Let's see. A sure sign that someone is being fake is if they spend most of their time talking about other people. And we're not talking about good conversation. We're talking about gossip. The most destructive kind of conversation there is. If you find yourself face to face with a good old fashioned gossip at the office, over coffee or on the street, there's a good chance they are trying to distract you with someone else's nonsense so you don't see theirs. Hmm. Number 15. Fake people like to show off in front of, of other people. Yeah, there's gray area there. I reaching through my life experiences. I've seen people who I know for sure are fake and some of them were not show offs. So that that's a gray area. And then finally, number 16, fake people say bad things about other people. OK, this I feel like this is a gray area. Let me read this. Similar to gossip, saying bad things about other people is a great way to distract from their own crap lives and make you think they have their acts together. It's a game of cat and mouse in the truest sense. They spit on some BS about someone and you chase after that and you chase after that information trying to validate it instead of trying to validate their story. Okay. That is a gray area to me because some things are subjective. First thing, the truth isn't always pretty. The truth is like rain. It doesn't care who it falls on. <laughs> if someone says something that is true, it in categorized as bad is still true. Where's the problem? I I don't get it. As long, as long, go back into, and I can't believe this is almost 30 minutes long. As long as what they said to whoever they were talking to, they can say it to the person they were talking about. That is the difference. That's the difference. So, like, this is kind of great <laughs> for me. If it's true, it may be bad, but the truth is the truth. So, yeah. Um, and like I said, that that's really subjective. Something being also considered bad is subjective. I don't, and even if it is bad, if it's true and somebody tells me, I might be taken back. I've been taken back a few times by my guy sister in Brooklyn, where she said certain things to me. But it was true, so I can't be mad at her. Because it was true. And if she would have said that to somebody else about me, that's fine too. Because I know she can say it directly to me and vice versa. If I've ever said anything about her, that's fine too, because she knows I can say it directly to her. So yeah, that's a gray area. So that was interesting on the 16 signs of fake people. This was at idea pod for those who want to go and read the entire thing. But yeah, I, I've given you my thoughts on fake versus polite and there is a difference polite will always be in my eyes the bare minimum thank you please i appreciate that have a good day fake is doing a whole lot of extra when you don't even care or when you you're not when you don't even rock with that person like that. That's fake. I don't do that. And I wish more people would be polite instead of being fake. But, you know, 
there's something else I could say, but I, uh, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> that is all I have for the show. Thank you for watching this. It, these weeks go by so fast. And it's like it was, it's the weekend again already. Um, I will do one more episode, one more video episode, and that will be it. If you notice the episode number did a jump, that is because, as mentioned previously, the podcast episode, podcast only episodes are only on the podcast. And I have three podcast episodes that I have already uploaded. They've been up for a minute now. And you probably want to go check those out because they were some interesting episodes. So you can go to KIRWKC.com and that will give you those podcast episodes. It'll take you directly to the main site for the Anchor podcasting website of Keeping It Real with KC. If you want to follow the show, you can follow on Twitter, KIRWKC. Also, you can follow on Instagram, KIRWKC. It's pretty easy to remember. Thank you again for watching and staying with me for this 30-minute show, which is longer than the usual shows I do. I appreciate you. Be blessed.